Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at some CSV files. CSV files are basically spreadsheets, but in a plain text file. So let me open this up with LibreOffice. See, when you open it up, it may ask you what you want to use it as a delimiter. The default delimiter is a comma. That's what the C in the CSV stands for. Uh, but you can use other characters as well, and you can say here. But when you do that, you can see it's it's a spreadsheet. This is just user information, right? We got usernames, last names, first names, addresses, locations, all that good information. Information. And although we can view it in a spreadsheet like this with pretty much any spreadsheet application, LibreOffice, uh, GNumeric is a, another option, uh, they are just a text file. So you can, again, you can view it with uh, Vim or NeoVim. You see, it's just text. Uh, but the formatting, you know, it isn't great because they're not lining up in columns like they do in a spreadsheet application. I can also just cat out that file. And again, it's it's wrapping the lines, so it's very hard to read like this. We're gonna make it, I'm gonna show you all a bunch of different options. I'm making it easier to read right here in the shell without having to open up graphic uh, interface, which is awesome, especially if you're on a server somewhere, you can uh, go through these files. I'm gonna start with the simplest. So we just catted it out, we displayed it to the screen. Another option would be less, right? We can say less in the name of the file. Now, if we do just less, less allows us to scroll through, but it's still wrapping the lines, so it's like, this is this is all like one line here. It's just wrapping it around. If we add the dash capital S option to that, it's going to prevent that line wrap. So now I can use my arrow keys. I can scroll to the left. I can scroll to the, the right. I said that backwards, but my right and my left. Uh, and you can also use um, forward slash and search for something. Like if I was type in green and hit enter, it will find green for me. And I can go through those just by hitting forward slash and enter to research that and Q to get out of that. So that works, still not beautiful. Uh, but we can make it better because the, one of the problems again with this is the the columns are not lining up. So let's go ahead and line them up with the command column. So we have column and I'm going to say T dash S with a comma here saying that we want to separate based on the commas. Okay. And we're going to give it that file and now everything is, but the problem it, it's separating it and putting spaces uh, actually in this case tabs where the commas are. Uh, and that's great, but it's that line wrapping. So what can we do again? We can run that same command. If I didn't already mention, all this in, is in notes in the description of this video. There's a paste bin with every command I'm running here. But we can pipe that output. So we're saying take the commas, line them up. So, so now we're replacing them with tabs, but we're lining them all up. And then we're going to say dash less, or sorry, pipe it into less with dash capital S. Now we have our columns. We can scroll left and right, or right and left, and we can go up and down. We can hit forward slash and type in wood and find all the places where wood shows up in the things. Great, that's that's great, a lot better. Uh, but what if, as I said earlier, people don't always use commas, because uh, because maybe commas might mess up what you're doing. Maybe you use a different delimiter. Like I like using the pipe symbol a lot when I'm doing this because people rarely type uh, those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create. I'm just going to use said here. I'm going to say convert all commas into pipe symbols and put those into a new file called users2.csv. Okay, now we can run the same command as before, right? But you see, instead of comma, I'm saying the pipe symbol. But since the pipe symbol is a special character, we have to say backslash first. Otherwise, it thinks you're piping into a new command here, right? So if I was to remove this backslash, it thinks that users2 is a new command. No, backslash saying, this is not saying pipe into a new command. We're saying use as your delimiter. You're, you know, S here is saying what we're using to separate the fields by. We're using the pipe symbol, and we'll get the same thing. So even though that new file, that users2, has these pipe characters instead of commas, we can still do that. Okay, so far, we've pretty much used all tools you'll find on pretty much all systems. Uh, but let's take it a little bit further. So I can open it up, right? I could do, let's go back up to this command, right? So I, I can say this, and I can view it right in here. This is nice. It's not highlighting the lines that I'm on, and, and I, maybe I want more functionality, but I don't necessarily want to edit that file. I just want to view it and go through it. Vim's a great option. Of course, I could open up with Vim, but if we were to run this command, we're saying, right here we're saying, run the columns command, separate it with the, with the uh, comma, but then take that output and open it in Vim, or in my case, it's actually NeoVim. Uh, so this will work, and it opens it up, and now we're kind of like in Vim, but we're not actually editing a file. I can edit it and save it, and but now I can move around. It's still, it's viewing it as a text file. We don't have separate cells like you would in some of their applications that we'll get to in a moment, but it might give you a little more if you're used to Vim and Vim bindings and you want to just go through this like that. That's how you would do that. You can just 
run that columns command to format it and then open it up in Vim, but you don't have to worry about you're not gonna be messing up this original file at that point. So now let's start looking at specialized tools for CSVs, right? So on a Debian-based system, you can say you uh, sudo apt get or sudo just uh, apt install and CSV tool. Well, I already have that installed, but once you install that, you can run it. You just say CSV tool readable and give it that file and it does it. And it's basically doing what our column command was doing. But of course we can pipe that into less and get it a little more viewable. So that's a tool specifically for it. Uh, another option would be instead of just uh, putting into less, we can say view, which is actually, I believe for Vi, it's the read only in Vi. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I think I need to, ah. <laughs> I'm messing this all up. Sorry, forgot the dash there saying accept the user input. So now we got scenario input, uh, but it's still doing the line wrapping. Uh, so that's just view is just a read only uh, version of Vi. Um, I'm just throwing that out there. I'm just giving you guys a bunch of options, but we can use Vim or NeoVim with the CSV tool readable, just like we did before. And now, depending on your Vim setup, whether you have line wrap set up or not, if you don't, it will look nice like this. Okay. So why would you use the CSV tool? It seems to be doing what column uh, is already doing. And that's true. Uh, what, what I've shown here and columns already a built in command. Why would you have this? I, I haven't played with the CSV tool very much. I wanted to throw it out there as an option. I'm sure it gives you more options if you read through the man page, uh, because lots of times, let's say you have a field that has commas in it. What will usually happen is the fields will then be wrapped in quotation marks and then commas. And then it gets confusing with the column because you can't just divide, uh, separate at the commas because it's just looking at all commas. It doesn't know where else. I'm betting that the CSV tool has options for that. Again, I haven't gotten much into it. I just thought I'd throw that out there as, as, as an option that I came across when I was preparing this video. Now, if you really want you know, the suite of spreadsheet and database editing tools in the shell that gives you a nice spreadsheet looking with columns and everything, VisiData. So VisiData, which is a great, great tool and seems to be heavily worked on. Uh, every time I go into it, it seems to be updated. So on a Debian-based system, sudo apt install VisiData. Once you have that installed, all you have to do is run Visi data and the name of the file you want. And here you go, you have, you know, a nice, it's actually, you can go into different cells. You can edit stuff. I can edit this and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so uh, you do have to read through the manual. The, the key bindings on this confuse me a little bit because I'm so used to Vim. I keep hitting my, my Vim stuff and that messes things up. But you can go through the columns and go E to edit a column. And there is help if you hit uh, Alt H, you'll see it brings up this little menu to where it has all commands or quick reference. And you can look at that and go through the man pages or again, Alt H, I can go um, spreadsheet commands and it will give you commands here that you can go through on how to do different things. VisiData is an amazing, amazing program. Just hit Q a couple times to get out of that. Uh, but it's also might be overboard for some people. It's, unless you spend some time getting used to it, uh, it's, it's an amazing program, but might be overkill for some people is basically what I'm trying to say. If you're just trying to view a uh, uh, CSV file in the shell um, and not necessarily edit it, you just want to view it nicely, I think uh, probably your best option is just to use the column command like so with less or Vim if you have your Vim set up to not wrap around. Uh, but yeah. If you wanted to view CSV files, again, you could just cat it, but if you want nice formatting, I gave you some options. I hope you found the stuff I showed you in this video useful. I hope you continue to watch my videos. My website is filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description of this video to all the notes uh, that I used in this video, all the commands. That's the address right there to the paste bin. You could also go to filmsbychris.com and uh, there's an option to see my notes on the page and it'll bring you to a searchable um, screen where you can search through all my paste bins. I also have GitHub or GitLab stuff. Anyway, visit my website, subscribe, like, and share this video. I hope you found it useful. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.